Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. Why, hello, hello. I'm still, I've still got a residual high from having the 2024 exam questions in my hand a couple of days after the exam. We already did problem one. We already did free response question two. We are now on to free response question number three. We do not get a calculator, but uh, don't be scared. It's just algebra. As long as we can do our easy algebra, we're, we're, we're good. Okay? It's the setup we got to worry about. Let's go. Three reads. The depth of seawater at a location can be modeled by the function h that satisfies the differential equation dh dt equals one half times h minus one times a cosine of t over two where h of t is measured in feet and t is measured in hours after noon noon is at time t equals zero it is known that h of zero is four 3a tells us that a portion of the slope field for the differential equation is provided, sketch the solution curve, y equals h of t, through the point 0, 4. My God, free response question 1 was easy, free response question 2 was easy, and they are starting out with a layup. Easy. The point 0, 4 is already on the graph. We just got to draw a line that goes through it, okay? And when I go through it, I just want to follow the, the, the I guess, the slant the curvature, the flow of these little slope fields. That's it. I mean, you're welcome. 3A is done. 3B. For time between 0 and 5, it can be shown that H of T is greater than 1. Find the value of T for T between 0 and 5, at which H has a critical points. Ooh, it's getting good already. H has a critical point. Then determine whether the critical point corresponds to a relative min, a relative max, or neither a min or max for the depth of the seawater at the location. Justify your answer. That means show me some work, kids. All right. I know a critical point is where my derivative is going to equal zero. Okay. This is how I determine where my critical points are. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my derivative and set it equal to zero. And you're thinking to yourself, Visca, I don't have a calculator. How on God's green earth am I supposed to figure this out? Well, first of all, we only gotta figure out T. That's gonna make this really easy. Visca, how? Because I know you're looking at this H like, what do I do? H is always bigger than 1. So let me ask you what happens when I take a value bigger than 1 and I subtract 1. This will always result in a positive value. So even if I was you know, trying to solve this, you know, these two factors here, okay, I take 1 half, which is positive, and multiply it times h minus 1, which we just said is always going to be positive. How come? Because h is always bigger than 1. Some number bigger than 1, if I subtract 1 from it, will be positive. This will never equal 0. This does not even come into play. The only time my derivative will equal 0 is when this factor is equal to 0. Now, you might say to yourself, ooh, how do I figure that out? And that's when I say to you, ooh, you didn't listen when I used to do other stuff. You better know the sine and cosine of some basic degrees like 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360. And know that 90 is really pi over 2, 180 is pi, 270 is 3 pi over 2, and 360 is 2 pi. All right. I like to use the graphs. Some people like to use the unit circles. Uh, I would not have to do this on a test if I were doing this myself. So if you knew this information already, you're good to go. But you're here because you want to see this. So let me explain. If I were to graph cosine, and at 
at 0. Here's 90, which is pi over 2. Here's 180, which is pi. Here's 270, which is 3 pi over 2. And here is 360, which is 2 pi. Okay. Uh, 1, here's where it's going to equal 0. Okay, that's what we're trying to figure out, the x-intercept. And here's negative 1. Uh, cosine is a cup. It starts up high, hits a 0, comes down to negative 1, comes up a 0 again, then finishes up at positive 1. Now, my interval tells me I want between 0 and 5. Pi, okay, that's the value for t. All right, so let's look here. Okay, let's look here. I want t over 2, all right? So right here, if I have t over 2, t has to be pi. So what I'm going to do for the sake of ease is I'm going to make all of these as fractions over 2, meaning 1 pi is like 2 pi over 2, okay? So t would have to be 2 pi, which is over 2, right? Here, I already have 3 pi over 2, so t would have to be 3 pi in this case. Here, 2 pi, that's the same thing as saying 4 pi over 2, right? Because 4 over 2 is 2. That means 4 pi over 2, my t has to be 4 pi. Because, again, I'm looking at what makes this 0. What do I put over 2? Okay, it's either going to be pi 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, and I want it between 0 and 5. Okay, pi is 3.14. Okay, the minute I go to 2 pi, 2 times this, that's 6.28. I'm bigger than 5 already. So 5 probably falls here. 0 falls here. So I'm really just looking between here. And I have my 0. It's at pi over 2. That's when my time is pi. So when I have pi in for time over 2, that's when I get my 0. So time has to be pi, which is 3.14. That's a critical point. So what I'm now going to do okay, is I'm going to put this on a number line from 0 to 5. Okay? That's my time. Okay? And again, I'm looking for when my derivative okay, is 0, that's when I hit pi, which is 3.14. That's a critical point. I need to check a value on either side. Okay? So all I'm going to do is realize I'm going to go to my graph, and I'm going to look between 0 and 5. Okay, I'm just, I care about this section right here. Here's my critical point when t is pi. What happens when I'm less, okay, than pi over 2? I have a positive value because I'm above the x-axis. This is positive. What happens when I have a number that's bigger than pi? Here, notice I'm below the x-axis, so negative. So if I were to graph that, kids, this would be an increasing slope to a decreasing slope. So at t equals pi, I have a maximum. All right, so i got to answer the question. Okay? There was a lot of explaining here if you didn't know how to do it. All right? And some of you guys might have taken the L once you saw trigonometry. But don't. You need to know your basic values of 90, 180, 270. If you did, this would be easy. This might be the catch, you know, that you really only need to focus on this part right here. Okay? Well, let's answer the question. Okay, determine where the critical point. What value of t? So there's a critical point at t equals pi. Or you could say 3.14, but pi is precise. And then there's a maximum at a value of t equals pi since dh dt goes from positive to negative 
through that point or through t equals pi. You're done. There was so much to explain and not actually do in that problem that it was crazy. Use separation of variables. Hmm. This is what I'm talking about. To find y equals h of t, the particular solution to the differential equation, dhtt equals 1 half h minus 1 cosine of t over 2, with the initial condition h of 0 equals 4. All right, let's go. Let's slay this. Let's cook, kids. Right? I want to get my dh alone with this on one side. I'll bring over the 1 half as well. Then I want my dt on this side. Okay? So let's just begin to do just that. All right? I am going to multiply this side by 2 times 1 over h minus 1. The 2 and the 1 half cancel. 1 over h minus 1 cancels with this h minus 1. So on this side, I got 2 times 1 over h minus 1. Now, on the left side, I'm going to multiply it times dt. How come? Because this will cancel with this. And I put that on this side as well. So when I rewrite everything, I have 2 times 1 over h minus 1 dh, and there's a reason I wrote a space there, equals cosine of t over 2 times dt. All right. I have now got to integrate both sides, and I'm going to pull that constant out. Ah, that's why I left the space, kiddos. All right. The left side, pretty simple. If you know your rules, the natural log of h minus 1 plus some constant 1 times 2, right? We can't forget, boom, our constant 2 there. All right? So here we go. Mm, mm. Now, on the other side, let's do a u sub. I mean, I hate doing u subs, but let's do it anyways, especially over simple things because I could do this quickly. But if u equals t over 2, or 1 half t dt, well, I just want to substitute. Okay, so now I'm integrating the cosine of u. But now I've got to find the derivative here. So du is just 1 half dt. This works out really nice. Because if I multiply this times 2, I multiply this times 2. I take my dt out and put 2 du in. So the 2 is going to be on the outside, and the du is here. Okay? Now let's integrate this side. It is 2. What do I integrate to cosine? It's sine of u. Okay? But what is u? Uh, plus some other constant. But what do we got to take the u out and put back in? t over 2, or 1 half t, okay, equals 2 times the ln of h minus 1 plus some constant 1. Now, I can divide both sides by 2 and get rid of the 2. That's why this works out nice. All right? And then I'm also going to, because these will be gone, subtract one constant from the other one. Extendo. Here we go. So I've got the ln of h minus 1 equals the sine of t over 2. When I combine two constants, it just gives me some third constant. All right? This really isn't going to be bad at all. And what do I mean? All right? At this point, okay, at this point, before I plug in my initial condition to find c, Okay, at this point, I want to get rid of the outline. It'll probably make things a lot easier. Okay, so put this to E, put this to E, and I've just got H minus 1 equals. All right, when I add two things in the exponents, that means I multiplied similar bases. Okay, E is a constant. A constant raised to a constant is just a constant.
And if you really wanted to, I can add one to both sides of this at this point. I mean, I don't have to, uh, but I will. Mm, yeah, I said I would already. So my equation, h equals some constant e sine of t over 2 plus 1. They give me the initial condition when t is 0, h is 4. That's what we're going to use to find c at t is 0, h is 4. Okay, so for my h, I got 4, that was my h, equals some constant e to the sine of 0 over 2, okay, that's my time, plus 1. All right, this is just the sine of 0. The sine of 0 is 0. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. So I really got c plus 1 equals 4. Okay? If I subtract 1 from both sides, I get 3 equals c. And that's what's going right back into here. And I'll have my equation. Okay? So h of t is going to be 3 e to the sine of t over 2 plus 1, we are done. That was not bad. That was not bad at all. That, that part B was a little confusing with the cosine and, you know, that H. Part C, if you're good at differential, uh, separable differential equations, you're good to go. And guess what? We're done with free response question three. You can go, but don't go too far because free response question number four is coming right up. See ya. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell.